Oops. So we're talking as a board, as a church, we have not talked about fasting in a while. So I looked it up. I was like, huh, wonder when the last time is I did talk about fasting. 2015. So it's been a little while since I've talked about it. And that's been, that's been almost Sarah's entire lifetime. <laughs> and um, so... We talked about it as a board and said, you know, we haven't done this for a while and, and we haven't talked about it as a while, haven't encouraged people to do this for a while. And it's incredible how certain topics can be something that you really have an internal battle, a spiritual battle going on to even talk about, to even encourage, to even, to even preach on, to, to, to bring up. Because what happens is, is it, it, it makes you go deeper with the Lord and the enemy doesn't want you to do that so he fights there's a battle going on on certain subjects when you go to preach so we're between Elgin days and VBS and I'll be honest with you in the board meeting we talked back and forth as to when do we when do I preach on this we figure we're gonna nail it we're nail we're gonna shoot an arrow in between VBS and Elgin days and that's where we are right now. Elgin, VBS is coming, Gwen. Did you realize that? It's coming. She's downstairs. I have no idea. But if you have any jars, we could use them probably. I'm assuming. You brought a whole bunch. What is fasting? What's the point of fasting? Did Jesus fast? Are we supposed to fast? If we do, how, why do we do it and how do we do it? The biblical definition, according to Strong's Dictionary, it says, a believer's voluntary abstinence from food for spiritual purposes. It is one of the most feared and misunderstood spiritual disciplines of all of them. Because we live in a society that are, we've become so me-centered. I remember there was a billboard between here and Smith Falls for the longest time. And it was, um, I think it was TELUS, one of the phone companies. And it says, they finally figured out it's all about me. Our society does not need to be told that it's all about me. We've already figured out it's all about me. It's more a matter of now making it less about me and more about the Lord, more about our fellow believers. It is a God-centered discipline. It's something that's about God. It's something that, that's less of me, more of him. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to, to wrap our minds around and to want to do. It's something that helps us recapture the hunger for God and capture the desire for his will to be happening in our lives. It's us saying to God, I am willing to forego anything to just have more of you. And it's not an easy thing to do. Why would we even want to fast? Why would we even, even consider taking a time and go without something? So that we can have a deepening hunger for our Lord. As we fast and as time goes along, the hunger in our belly is a steady reminder of how much more we want our Lord. That hunger is a physical reminder of the spiritual desire that we should have. And we hunger for him, hunger for more of him, hunger for him to do great and amazing things. Second idea is that it's for guidance. Fasting is saying, God, I don't want my will, but I want your will. I want your direction. I want your help. I want you to do what you want to do in my life. I will forego my will and seek yours. The Israelites, they fasted in Judges chapter 20, verse 26. They fasted to seek God's direction on whether or not they should go into battle. Paul and Barnabas, they prayed and they fasted before they chose the elders and the leaders of the early church. In Acts chapter 14, verse 26, 23. Acts 14, verse 23. So really, if, if Paul and Barnabas did that when they were choosing the elders for the early church, 
that really we should be fasting before we have our annual meetings. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, it says, So I turned to the Lord and I pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. In this situation, they're praying and fasting, interceding on behalf of their nation. They interceded that God would, would bless that nation and God would work in that nation. That God would forgive the nation. The reality is, Sorry, somebody's wandering around the parking lot, but it's okay. They're getting in their car. <clears throat> we seek God's intervention into our nation. I could be wrong, but I think our nation has a little bit of some issues going on right now. We have some leadership that some people absolutely adore, but some people not so much. We have some leadership going on that's, that's, that's embracing the, the, the act of sin and celebrating it rather than trying to repent from and reject it. We can fast on behalf of our nation that God will, will pour out his spirit and there will be repentance and, and an incredible, incredible change in this place that we, we call home our country, and our home. We can pray that God will heal our land, that God will send revival, that God will put a desire for him in people's hearts again. We can pray for God to break the bondages that, that happen in our lives. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, it talks about those bondages that we, that we battle, those, those things, those buttons that the enemy knows how to push. Those things, those bondages, those, 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 those things that, 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 tear us, that tear us down, that the enemy uses to, 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 to manipulate and control us. We can fast and ask God to break those bondages and, and set us free from the, this prison that we sit, that we sit in. As a church, we can pray together that God will break down the bondages. There are spiritual battles going on all around us. We are always praying that God will put a hedge of protection around this property. A lot of times I pray that he'll go all the way around the property, over the top of the steeple and down below the depth of our well. He'll put a circle, he'll put us inside a bubble, even those, those five acres of land that we can't even use sitting over there. That he'll put a protection all the way around this thing. That when people cross the threshold of the property of this, somebody just went to find out the restaurant was closed and they walked up to the restaurant. That when people come into this parking lot, that they'll sense the power and the presence of God, whether they ever step foot in this building, but that they will, that they will sense the power and the presence of God and they'll return back to their church and they'll hear the gospel of Jesus Christ when they get home. We can petition for God to break any kind of attachments that were attached to this church. Sins of the past, sins of the present. That God will break those things down. God will create unity. Number five, that we can pray and fast as we prepare for battle. Judges 20, verse 26, the Benjamites were defeating the Israelites and they prayed and they fasted for God's for God's victory. 1 Samuel 7, 6, Samuel gathered the, pe gathered the people in Mith Mith Mizpeth as they fought the Philistines and they prayed and they fasted for victory in their battle. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 3, Jehoshaphat called for a fast in all of Israel when he opposed the Moabites and the Amorites. We are in a spiritual battle. We're in war right now. Just deciding on whether or not to preach this sermon, there was a battle going on within me as to whether I should or shouldn't. We are in war. That's why we ask for the Lord to put a hedge of protection around this place that the enemy can't get in. And the Lord will be victorious in this place. And that's the Lord that we serve. We serve and we pray for, for the Lord to win the battles, to win the battles over the, that are within the heavenlies. The reality is, in the New Testament, there is not one scripture that tells us when 
or why to fast. So why do we do it in the New Testament? Did Jesus tell us to do it? If he did, when did he tell us to do it? Where does he tell us to do it? Old Testament, it's all through the Old Testament. The Israelites were put in sackcloth and ashes and fasting and, and going on without food, without water, without this, without that. And it's, it's quite, the, quite the ordeal in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, there isn't a clear statement of when, how, and why. However, in Mark chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, and in Luke 5, verse 34 and 35, they're mirror scriptures, Jesus asked, do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Someday he will be taken away from them and then they will fast. The Pharisees were confronting Jesus and his disciples and saying, well, why don't your disciples fast? John's do, the, John the Baptist, they do. The Pharisees do, everybody else does, but your guys don't. They go along and they pick grain on, sun, on, on the Sabbath. Why don't your guys fast? And Jesus says, because when the bridegroom, which was him, is here, it isn't the time to be fasting, it's the time to be celebrating, it's the time to be going on. But once he has gone, that's when they will fast. Matthew 6, 16 to 18. And when you fast, Jesus is saying this, when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do who look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they'll ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will suspect that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in secret. And your father who knows all secrets will reward you. Jesus says this, when you fast, it's always nice when a baby's a hot potato, isn't it? <laughs> when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face. Well, when you have very little hair, you have a lot of face to wash sometimes, right? <laughs> So people don't know when you're fasting. Do it in secret because the Lord will reward you. Does that mean there's going to be, Jesus said this, and if he said that, that means there's going to be some sort of reward. But it also means don't let everybody in the countryside know because you're laying on the ground holding your stomach, ah, while you're fasting. Jesus is clearly telling us to fast. Jesus himself went into a fast that, whoa, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. When Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit and tempted by the devils for 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing, and he became very hungry. Well, no doubt he got hungry. He, ate it. he didn't eat for 40 days, for heaven's sake. That's a long time, Mike. That's like 40 days. Of course he got hungry. But Jesus himself fasted. So though there's no specific scripture verse explaining exactly how to, when to, it is talked in, New, in the New Testament that it's something that Jesus just expected us to do. It was a foregone conclusion. It wasn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But yet, we seem to have lost this discipline within, the, within our church today. I think there isn't a specific command because the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the Sadducees, they had made such a mockery and such a mess of fasting that we weren't given the exact formula of how it works out. Just look at what kind of mess has been made of communion slash Eucharist slash what all the fancy names are you come up with. There's so many fancy names and fancy things. I saw a communion happen one time. This guy had this plate and he held the plate up and he holds the thing up and he takes it down and he scoops. It was, he scoops up the piece of the, the, the token thingy, the the wafer, you know, that piece of cardboard they some churches use. He scooped the thing up and then he held it up there and he goes, flip. And he flips the thing, pulls the plate out from underneath, and he holds up for the plate for everybody to see. He went on and on and on and on about this plate, and then finally ate the piece of bread. And I'm like, it was like a circus act. It was honestly a circus act. Like he was playing with a, with a, um, 
hula hoop or something. Like, what are you doing? I found out that the plate... Sorry, no. I asked a priest what the deal with that was. And he says, sometimes what a priest will do is they'll get a plate and they'll have their parents' wedding rings or something that melted into the plate. And the plate is very, very important to them. And it's become very, very important. So sometimes they really get interested in their plate and they forget the point of it all. It's not about the plate. It, it's, it's not about... <laughs> If communion, sorry, if, if, if what's happened to communion has happened, what would happen to a discipline of fasting? Look at what's happened with baptism. My goodness, you baptize a baby, you baptize an adult, you baptize them, completely dunk the baby, do you just sprinkle the baby, you shoot them with a water gun? What do you do during COVID? That's what they were doing in some churches, shot the kid with a water gun. How do you do it? It's just been so brutalized because people get their opinions and jam it into the discipline. If fasting was completely explained, we'd have a quite the ordeal with that. So why or how or when do we fast? The reality is throughout scripture in the Old Testament, there were breakthroughs that happened while fasting. Major, major breakthroughs. Battles were won. Bondages were broken. Relationships were, were repaired. And it just happened over and over again. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Daniel 9, 3. Isaiah 58, 6. Judges 20, verse 26. 1 Samuel 7, 6. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 3. Bondages and victories and battles and, and the, 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 the um, relationship with Israel to... to um, to God were repaired and relationships were, were, were mended when people took the time to pray and fast. How do we do it? The first thing we need to do is we need to have a specific reason, purpose of why we're doing it. What is our purpose? What are we reasoning? What, is our, what, what do we wish for God to see God do? We need to have a reason, a specific pointed reason. Why am I going to take this time to fast? Why am I going to take this time to, to set aside, become hungry, and become hungry before our Lord? We need to make sure we have the right heart behind why we're doing it. We need to make sure that our fasting is the purpose of God's will and not our will. The reality is, Scripture says that God does pay attention when we implement this discipline into our relationship with Him. He knows what's going on. He sees it. Zechariah 7, chapter 7, verse 5. Say to all your people and your priests, during these 70 years of exile, when you fasted and mourned in the summer and in the early autumn, was it really for me or, were you fast, or what were you fasting for? He sees it. He pays attention. He knows whether our heart is right or whether we're just doing it because it's a routine. Whether it's just a system. It's just something we're, we do because it's Thursday and I always fast on Thursdays. It gets to the point that we're just fasting because it's that particular day of the week rather than because we're doing a pointed purpose in the middle of it all. He sees it. He sees our heart. If we have the wrong heart, the wrong motives, we're simply making ourselves hungry or making ourselves inconvenienced in the middle of the middle of our week for no apparent reason because he's he's not going to listen to it if our heart is not right. Isaiah 58, 1 to 5, looking at verse 3 and 4. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and you exploit your workers. Your fasting ends with quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. He's telling us that our hearts need to be right. That we need to make a difference in our day. We need to, we need to do something different if we want God to hear us. Simply going without something in our lives isn't what gets God's attention. We need to have a heart level humbling and conviction. We have to have a heart level commitment going on as to why, when, and where 
and what we're fasting from. What do we do during the fast? We make sure we're not purposely drawing attention to ourselves. You don't need to keep it secret from your spouse. Remember in St. Mary's, it was big, a husband and wife were like, I don't know how to fast because the, the wife always figures out when I'm doing it. And they work so hard to try to keep it. The reality is you're not going to be able to keep it secret. But what Jesus is trying to tell us is we're not supposed to be letting the entire community and everybody around us know that we're doing this and we're walking around like like we're we're an invalid because we're we're doing this. It's a matter of it's supposed to be between us and God. And if our close close people in our lives hear, realize, know, it's okay because they kind of they're going to find out. But we're not supposed to be bragging about it. We're supposed to keep it to ourselves. We don't want people to think that we're, to, we're not supposed to be trying to make people think that we're holier than everybody else. That we're better than everybody else. We're higher than everybody else. That's what the Pharisees would do. They'd go out of their way and they make sure everybody in town knew that it was their turn. And everybody in town knew because they wanted to be elevated and looking better than everybody else. And meanwhile, that's not what the point is because the reward you're looking for not that we're, we're going to get a reward for doing it, but what you're looking for, you're going to get from the people around you rather than from God himself. When we, take time to pray, when we take time to fast, we need to take the extra time to be, to be in prayer. We need to take the extra time to, to spend before the Lord. The time that you would be doing whatever the activity is, eating or the activity that, you'll, that you would fast from, you then take some of that time or all of that time, whichever, and you spend that time in prayer. The purpose of fasting is to draw closer to the Lord. So we spend extra time with him. You're not going to hear from him if you don't spend time with him. So we spend that extra time. Esther 4, 1, Matthew 17, verse 21, Luke chapter 2, verse 37, Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. Uh, Acts 14, verse 23, 1 Corinthians 7, 5, it says, when you pray, you're so fa when you fast, you're to be praying extra during those times. We need to have a clear reason. We need to have a clear purpose. As we take these clear purposes before the Lord in the time of prayer and fasting, then we know to be able to, how to be able to focus those times, focus that, our attention closer with the Lord and focus more on Him for those particular, particular reasons. We need to decide on what kind of fast. If you're going to fast, you need to decide what kind you're going to. Are you just going to go without food? Are you going to go without food and flavored drinks? Just go with plain water for that period of time. Are you going to go like the Esther one where they did food and water? That's very much not re recommended by most people that talk about this. But they even went without both. Are we going to fast from an activity in our lives? In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3 to 7, it says about fasting from sexual int intimacy. But when you take that passage, you realize that activities can also be fasted. Do we fast from social media? Do we fast from television? Do we fast from a hobby? Do we fast from something in our lives that we will notice not being there? Do we fast from something that, that, that we're going to suddenly feel like we're missing that activity? What is our motivation? Why are we wanting to fast? Has the Lord directed you to fast? Is it because the body, the people in the church are corporately doing it? Are we fasting? Are we fasting because the Lord is leading us to be a part of it? Is it simply because you're seeking to have lose weight for medical reasons? Are you fasting dear to peer pressure because other people have told you you need to do this? Are you fasting because an annual meeting's coming up and we need to be praying for a board and you joined in because you kind of needed to? 
It all comes down to when we give, we give with a joyful heart. When you fast, you get to fast with a, with a desire, with a want to be a part of that. You need to decide before you begin your fast, are you going to spend extra time in prayer? And if so, when and how much? But we also need to realize that fasting also isn't a get-rich-quick scheme of a relationship with God. Some things fasting doesn't do. It does not allow, it doesn't make God love you anymore. You cannot make God love you anymore. He loves you more than our human minds can even comprehend. Now, Malachi chapter 3 verse 17, it says that we are God's treasured possession. He loves you more than we can even dream of. John 3.16, he loves you so much that he sent Jesus so that you can have eternal life. He loves you so much. You cannot fast and make him love you more because he already does. You cannot make him enjoy you more. Ze Zephaniah chapter 7 verse 13, chapter 3 verse 17 he will rejoice over you with great gladness. He will exalt over you. He will exalt over you by singing a happy song. He is excited about you. He is celebrating you. He has joy in you. And fasting doesn't make him more joyful of you or happy with you or love you anymore because he already does beyond what we can ever imagine. It is not a quick, get rich quick scheme into holiness. Holiness is only done through Christ's death and death on the cross. It's only done by walking with him and and not falling away in our faith. We become more and more holy by the daily living for him. It doesn't make him forgive you of something that's been in your life. He doesn't make him forgive you for for your, the sin you were born and the sin that you might commit. Fasting does not do that because Jesus' death on the cross is what forgives you of your sin. There's nothing you can do that will cause him to forgive you for anything except for asking him to forgive you by asking for his blood to, be, to, be, um, to cleanse you as white as snow. He died on the cross he took his blood and he sprinkled it on the mercy seat. That's how our forgiveness is done. It's through his blood and his blood alone. It is not a substitute for obedience. I was talking to somebody one time and they said, well, I do this for penance to be able to be, to be able to get God to forgive me. I do this to be able to this and that. And they're doing like a penance thing. They're doing this, this payment thing as part of their, as part of their kind of like buying your car and you're making payments. I'm going to do fasting to be able to make payments. I'm going to go to church a certain number of times to make payments to be able to get God to do all this stuff for me. But that penance is not in the scriptures. Jesus died. It was him crucified and it's by free gift that we that we have this relationship with him. We are unable to take any credit for the salvation and for what God has done. Yeah. We can take no credit for it. It's completely by Jesus and his free gift. We are saved by his mercy and there's nothing we can do physically that will give us more favor in his eyes. So why should somebody fast? We fast because we want to have a desire for a deepened hunger with our Lord. We fast because we want guidance, saying, God, not my will, but yours be done. Please show me what you want. We fast so that he'll give us guidance, give us wisdom. We fast to intercede on behalf of our nation. We fast to break the bondages that may be in our life or in our nation. We fast to prepare for battle. So what do we do when we fast? <laughs> we decide what we're going to fast from. We have a, spe a specific purpose. We don't advertise it and draw and do attention to ourselves. 
We decide to spend a little extra time in prayer, or a lot of extra time. We have a clear, behi clear purpose behind it. And we have to have a right heart. Sometimes churches will have a group fast. We would cry out saying, God, we need victory over these spiritual wars, these spiritual battles that we're facing. Fast together for deliverance for our land and for our church. We fast that the Lord's will be done and not ours as a church. We pray and fast for a breakthrough within this community that God will just send revival. I'm sure you guys kind of picked up on the direction I'm going with this. Do we as a church, do we take some time and do we fast as a church together? My thought, my, my heart, my, my idea here is that asking the Lord will break strongholds, things that are holding our church back. That the Lord and only His will be done, not mine as the pastor, not the board's, but the Lord's will be done in this church. That we get out of His way and let Him do what He wants done and we allow Him to do it. We ask the Lord for, for clear direction on how to reach the lost in this community. Every community has a different personality. Every community has a different way of being able to reach them. It's a matter of asking the Lord, how do we reach this community? How do we break the spirit of religion in this, in, in this community? We have, we have a youth program with, with a, a number of kids coming to it, or youth. We get a boys and girls club that have a bunch of kids coming to it. We have VBS coming in two weeks from now. Two weeks. We're going to have the community coming into this building. Last week I said that, that the lost never come on their own. The reality is they're coming in two weeks. There are parents that are bringing their kids that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They are coming in two weeks. How do we reach them? We ask the Lord to break the spirit of selfishness in this community. In this land that we live in. We ask the Lord to bring unity to this church and to this community. So one of my thoughts is that people choose a day. Choose a day in the next week that you'd be able to fast. It's a symbol of your desire of wanting more of God, spending time with Him, because the praying has to go with the fasting, that you'll spend extra time in prayer that day. You would fast from 12 midnight till 12 midnight. Done with a pure heart. You don't sign up due to pressure. And a lot of times for medication reasons, for medical reasons, for all dietary reasons, sometimes people can't fast food. It's just, it's, it's a reality. But it doesn't have to be food. Television, sports, taking, taking naps, hobbies, drinking coffee. Something that you would <laughs> something that, that you would notice not being in your life that day. Something that you'd be like, wow. And at the end of the day, you'd be like, wow, that was missing. Something that you would that you Sometimes some people are really into video games or into stuff like that. You take a day away from doing that. Something that you would notice. We've done it in the past. And I made a calendar. And on the calendar, people put their names on there. And in my eyes, that backfired painfully. Because on the thing, everybody could see who was fasting and when. And then we had somebody sit down with a piece of paper. And they wrote down the names, the, name, the days that certain people were fasting because they felt they weren't going to do a good enough job with it or weren't going to take it serious enough. So then they fasted on the days that those ones were too. And they did 
quite a few of the days in that period of time because they knew that person wasn't going to do well enough because I'd had each person choose a certain day rather than working together on this. So on the back table, there's little papers. looks just like that. I didn't put a spot to write your name down because it's not a matter of who is doing it. But I made it, <laughs> I would like to have a copy. I don't want to know who you are. I would like to have a copy just so that I know that each of the days are covered. And you just check off the box and you just rip it in half and throw one into the box and you have one for yourself in case you forget and think, why am I, why have I got this in my pocket? But if you're interested in joining, just check off the day that, that you feel would work for you because <laughs> you're putting in a really, really heavy day of doing heavy work. Fasting that day would be hard on your body too. But a day that would work for you. I don't want to know who you are. I'm just more interested that we've got all of the seven days covered. And we're fasting that the Lord will, will just impact this community. That the Lord, as we get ready for VBS, that the Lord will just prepare us to be able to reach this community and, and touch these families and that God will just impact this community. The reality is when VBS happens, there's stuff that happens that shouldn't happen. We found out about one of our youth kids. We had a child acting up. We didn't notice it. One of our youth kids told the kid, if you don't settle down, God's going to make you go to hell. It's like, we found out about that. It was around Christmas time this year. And they did it at VBS months earlier. And they thought it was really funny because the kid didn't come for the rest of the week. They thought it was really funny. And for the life of me, I can't figure out who the kid was that they said this to. But the thing is, is we can't be in those private conversations that happen within the groups because we're spread out doing stuff. That happened. And it's like, what? So I had a nice chat with that youth saying, don't ever threaten a kid with what God will do to you in a... Um, disciplinary action because that's not the God I serve and you're not the one to be telling them that anyways. We need to pray that God will protect our kids from stuff that our other kids might do. And it's an exhausting week, spiritually, emotionally, physically. That God will just be with VBS because it's coming. It's coming two weeks away. It's coming. And that God will just touch this community, impact this community, and every single family, every single car, every single person that crosses the threshold of the perimeter of this property, that they will see, hear, and experience our Lord when they arrive. That's kind of where the, the heart is. And then Boys and Girls Club will be starting in late September. That God will just do great things. That's kind of where my heart is. Oops. And um, I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, God, for all that you are, Lord. We thank you, God, for how great you are. We thank you, God, for how awesome you are. We thank you, God, for loving us so very much, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you'll just work on our hearts and our lives, Lord God, and show us how great you are, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, as we look at going into this, into this discipline, as we go into this, this group fast, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just move in our hearts, Lord God, and draw us closer to you, Lord God. And this is a discipline that, that a lot of Christians have never even done before. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just move in our lives, Lord God. And I pray, God, that you will just impact us, Lord God, and draw us to you, Lord God. And I pray, Jesus, that you'll show us if or how we can even be a part of this or be involved. Oh, Heavenly Father, be glorified. Be high and lifted up, Jesus. To you be all praise and glory, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, we give you, give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, be glorified, Lord. And I pray, Jesus, just, just give us your wisdom, Lord God. And I pray, God, for a breakthrough in this community, Lord Jesus. 
I pray, Lord God, for a move of your spirit in this community, Lord God. I pray, Jesus, that when people will come to VBS in two weeks from now, that, that they don't just come and, and, and become a part of this church, but they will become a part of the body of Christ, and they'll go to the church that, that, that's their church again, Lord God. I pray, Jesus, that you will build the kingdom, Lord God. This is about the kingdom, Lord Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, God, for that spirit of religion that's in this town, Lord God. That spirit of religion of, oh, I'm such and such a religion, and, well, my church closed, so I don't have to go anymore. Oh, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just impact hearts, that it's not about it's not about the, the particular denomination. It's about serving you, Lord Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus, be glorified, be high and lifted up, Lord God. To you be all praise and glory, Lord God. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Oh, Jesus, in your precious name, Lord God. Oh, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we, we give it all to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. And I pray, God, that we will have the right heart before you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that we will stand before you, Lord God, and we will just come and draw close to you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for you. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your truth. Jesus, in your precious name, Lord God. And I pray, God, if somebody can't do it this week, that it can be next week. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you just help us not to be afraid of such disciplines, but may we have a heart for such disciplines, Lord, that will just draw ourselves closer to you and see you do incredible things. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.